I think we're dealing with a, a mindset and a mentality that is completely unenlightened oh. on firearms, notwithstanding the fact that we've been presenting evidence to the contrary for decades. Um, you know, I mean, Jenny, this is, our, this is our lawsuit challenging New Jersey's right to carry laws. We expect it to go to the U.S. Supreme Court, and this is the first time the Attorney General of the state of New Jersey has been forced to articulate a position on a Second Amendment issue. And it's very telling. Okay. He the, sure uh, is. Yeah, you know, she's basically said two things in her brief. She said, number one, the Second Amendment doesn't really apply outside your home. Okay. You know, the right to keep and bear arms is limited by the Heller decision, which means inside the home is protected, they can see, but outside the home is not. So they, they, they actually say that that's uh, not covered by the Second Amendment uh, as articulated under Heller. And the second thing is that law abiding citizens carrying firearms pose a danger to the public, and it's the state's duty, it's the state's compelling interest to protect the public from that danger. And they, they've said that in a number of different ways, in a number of different places in their papers, but it's, you know, it's a, it fundamentally misconceives the carry issue, you know. I mean, and, and the, the, it's amazing. I know it, it's, it's legal talk, and she talks about this justifiable need, justifiable need requirement is constitutional, and it, it's part of the long-standing scheme to reasonably regulate firearms. I mean, it is a scheme, and it is about regulating firearms, and it's about denying people the right to defend themselves. Well, that, that's right. And just, you know, to, to further enlighten on the meaning of justifiable need, in New Jersey, in order to qualify for a handgun carry permit, you must convince both a police chief and a judge that you have quote, justifiable need, which has been defined by the courts to mean urgent necessity of self-protection as verified by uh, threats, you know, verifiable threats and mm -hmm. other proof. So it, essentially in New Jersey, by the time you could qualify for a carry permit, it's already too late. The threat has to be imminent, it has to be present, and there has to be proof of specific threats. By the time you get it, it's too late. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it really is a, an outrageous and unreasonable standard that it, its net effect is to make it virtually impossible to get a carry permit for the average ordinary citizen. And so, you know, if you look at the brief, the language in the brief doesn't go into that definition. It talks about, well, you know, it's not unreasonable for, you know, we have a compelling state interest in protecting the public from handguns on the loose out there, and justifiable need is a reasonable requirement. But as applied in New Jersey, it's anything but reasonable. It's yeah. a reasonable. It's a de facto ban. It really on is. And they have this crystal ball theory that you were just talking about, that generally speaking, one cannot know whether crime against an individual will occur at all, much less know where, when, or how. Yeah, I mean, that's a direct quote. And, uh, you know, I guess the saying. carrying of a handgun inherently comes with the danger and risk of its misuse or accidental use. These dangers and risks are borne by everyone with whom the person encounters. When handguns are permitted to be carried beyond one's home, the dangers and risks necessarily increase and are borne by the public. She's es essentially saying the public needs to be protected from yep. law-abiding citizens carrying firearms. And it's not only is it outrageous, but it's completely ignorant of the mountain of evidence that is out there uh, that, that shows, that, that proves that, you know, where shall issue carry laws are passed, crime, violent crime drops and, and is sustained at lowered levels. And we all know the reason for that is very simple. When, when um, predators can't tell the difference between the wolves and the sheep, the whole flock is safer. Okay? Uh, you know, when, when one citizen carries a firearm, exercises his right to carry a concealed firearm, it protects everyone. It has a net effect chilling criminal activity. They go elsewhere to commit their crimes. And so, you know, I mean, you know, John Lott has, you know, written several books on this. It's and, pretty and we, hard to refute the statistics. It really is. And we talk to armed citizens every day. We hear about their stories, that if they didn't have that firearm, they would be dead. Their co-workers would be dead. I mean, it's obviously, it, this isn't about caring about what happens to people when they're in a, you know, a life or death situation. It's about an agenda. But I got to ask you, what can you tell us about this AG? Did you expect something like this? Well, yeah. I mean, we're disappointed, but frankly, not surprised. Mm -hmm. This attorney general who was confirmed last year 
uh, has come out of the box swinging at gun owners. You know, we also have a, um, a lawsuit pending to bring down New Jersey's one gun a month law, and she very aggressively defended the state's law on that, which she did not need to do. Shortly after that, there was something that happened last year um, uh, with um, a civilian marksmanship program where all of a sudden New Jersey uh, sales of CMP rifles were suspended to New Jersey because uh, she wanted a change of procedure where the CMP could no longer send guns directly to the purchasers. It had to go through an FFL. So, you know, she's not shy on gun issues. Um, the mindset, quite honestly, you know, it harkens back to the pre-Heller mindset. If you recall, everyone, you know, in government was simply saying, well, it's just not an individual right. It belongs to the states. You know, an absolutely insane, arcane, very difficult to justify argument was being made. And then when forced, they had to switch and say, well, yeah, it is an individual right, but we can regulate it. So, you know, they just, they're trying to achieve the same thing through a different um, argument. The same thing is happening here. They're taking the most aggressive anti-gun position um, that I can imagine, you know, essentially saying the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms doesn't apply outside your home. It's a literal reading of Heller that says because Heller only treated the issue of um, self-defense inside the home that, that essentially anything outside of that doesn't exist. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be a hard fight every single step of the way on every single issue. And, uh, you know, it's frankly a little sickening, you know, to see, you know, folks in government saying that, especially as the political climate is changing around us. You'd think, you know, they'd get a little religion on this, uh, on this <laughs> issue. Basically, thumb in their nose at the Supreme Court, really, is the way I see it. But the AG is also looking at removing your organization from the lawsuit. That's right. Um, you know, one of the things that, that she said in her papers is that, that uh, the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs doesn't have standing to sue uh, on a highly technical argument. And, and, by the way, that is not true. That issue was thoroughly researched and developed, and, you know, it remains to be seen. But, yeah, she wants to boot the organization out of the case and just deal with the individuals. And you may recall, Ginny, you know, one of our lead plaintiffs, individual plaintiffs in the case was a gentleman who was kidnapped. Right. A kidnapped victim, a part-time sheriff you also have? That's right. That's right. I mean, it really, our list, our roster of individual plaintiffs really shows how extreme New Jersey standards oh. are, because if members of law enforcement and crime victims who are still in jeopardy uh, can't qualify, then nobody can. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to fight the good fight on this one, probably all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court.